Hello gems and welcome back to the Sapphire Star. Today we're going to learn how to use Video Tube Mini, a fantastic PNG tuber device. It is an upgrade, a step up from another one called Fuji Tech or Fuji Tech. If you want to check out the tutorial on that video, you can find the link down below or click the video up above. But this is sort of the second like upgrade. If you want to have your VTuber do a little bit more than just light up during streaming and have a few extra movements, but also is not quite as intense as a live 2D model like I have here. It's kind of a really great in-between. So we're going to be reviewing that program today and I'm going to show you how to bring your PNG tuber to the next level. Let's get started. So step number one is going to be to download VideoTube Mini here on itch.io. This was created by an independent developer. Yo, we really love our independent developers in the VTubing industry because y'all always be making stuff way easier. So thank you so, so much. So big shout outs to all me. Woo woo. Thank you. So there's a bunch of extra info here, but I'm going to be talking to you guys pretty much about how to do this so we'll go ahead and click download now you're more than welcome to donate to the creator on itch.io or you can go straight to the downloads either or i'm going to support the creator because i enjoy supporting creators where i can i think it's great to give back once you get to the download page you can choose any of the versions you have so it's great because it looks like it supports linux mac os uh, and windows so i'm going to do windows 64 bit after you get that downloaded you can click show in folder and it's going to be in your downloads folder and i'm going to right click and extract to video tube and here's the folder here. We can open the folder and then we can go ahead and double click this application to launch. All right, here we are. So you may have a deer on your screen. Mine's a little bit different. So let me show you one of the features first here that you can do, which is super cool. You can load in an avatar so you can save file. So if you're doing a commission PNG tuber for somebody that's going to use their model in VideoTube Mini, for example, you would save this file out and I'll talk a little bit more to that later. But it looks like in the VideoTube Mini file that you downloaded, they have an avatar example. So you can look at some of these examples uh, that they set up. This sock pocket pocket so sock puppet kind of creepy. <laughs> I don't like sock puppets. This is the one that it will spawn in as you can look at the settings and here's another example. Whoa, this one's kind of crazy too. <laughs> but yeah, so you can load any of these files and keep in mind that you can save out your own files to send to a client if you're doing something like a VTuber or a PNG tuber commission for somebody. All right, so we'll talk more about that in a bit. But first, I want to talk to you about the actual images that you need to really try and get the most out of the basic stuff that you have here in video Two mini there's other states you can move your character into too which is super awesome um but i'm going to talk to you kind of about the basics and we'll explain more about that as well in a bit probably the most important thing with video Two mini is understanding what all these different images here need to be so i actually put together a little google docs that i am going to link in the discord right here we have a section in the discord called saya youtube handouts so it will be here for you to use if you'd like to check it out and this this guide talks to you a little bit about how to set all that up. The 2048 by 2048 pixels is one of the key things for you to note immediately. You don't have to start your painting or your PNG tuber character on this canvas size, but when you start exporting, exporting, dude, I can't talk today. When you start exporting them out of your art program, you'll want to have them on a 2048 by 2048 pixel canvas. For example, my initial canvas size is 3024 by 4032, just because I wanted to have a high res version of this image in case my client wants to print it out or use it for other graphics. So you can start on a bigger canvas for coloring or drawing your PNG tuber in general, but then you'll want to have a separate version, which is what I made here. That's a 2048 by 2048. So if we look here, we can see the 2048 by 2048. There's some space around her as well. I just dropped all the images in here, as you can see, so I can turn them uh, on and off and have all these different ones. And you want to try to export them in the same spot as well so that your animation or your, your model is not moving like everywhere all at once. So moving through, the first image you want to export is the closed mouth image. So the eyes should ideally be open, the mouth should be closed. That is for this first image here. So you would click this, you would go and find the closed mouth image one, and then you would select it from this folder and it will upload in. So you'll fill all these out. So that's the first one. The second one here is going to be the eyes open, mouth open. So just you're just changing the mouth. The mouth is the only thing changing from this first frame to the second frame from here to here. And you can see these little images too that guide you and show you there as well. Now I have a little extra piece I added here, which was a hand wave because I wanted to give her a little bit more spice. So as you can see, when I talk, she jumps and she has that little hand wave, but that's only when I talk, not when she blinks. And I made that mistake earlier where I had it on where she blinks and the hand raises and it got all janky. So you have the visual guide that you can check out here if you want to do something extra like a hand wave or maybe the hair is moving or something like that. And then next, number three, you'll have a closed mouth blinking image. So now the eyes are blinking and then the eyes are blinking in the second one as well. You just have again closed mouth and then an open mouth for the final one. 
And that should be a really good start for getting a starting point for your PNG tuber. The next piece is to go over here. After you get this done, this is kind of your core part. You can start messing with some of these other tools here. So there's a bunch of different feelings. You can do this like closed mouth shaking. This one is when, so this one is for when you're not talking and this one is for when you are talking. So you can mix and match them, which might cause it to look a little weird you see there, or you can make them the same and they're all color coded. So if you kind of, there's all these different energies, I'll let you play with those depending on like what kind of like look or vibe you want that so that's going to be a self like personal preference i tend to like the turning it both to bounce i like the bounce one so i like five i like this one this is probably my favorite is like having the little bounce and then you can also have a jump on talk or you can turn it off i find you don't really need the jump on talk if you already have the jumping motion but this one is optional if, if you want to have it be static and just have a jump on the talk and not have any of that extra movement and then this next piece here is to switch to this specific state so we're, let's pull out some of our example models again so if we open the avatar examples and we go to one uh, like snart we can see how he has these different states which are him in like these different like poses and positions oh my gosh this one's crazy okay so you have all these different ones and that's what the hotkey would be set up for so these don't have hotkey set up but if i wanted this to be for example like let's do like an h and then i wanted state number uh one to be set as a hotkey as a j so then i could go click j right now i'm clicking h on my keyboard now i'm clicking j h j so if you want to switch between this could be a really great way to if you have something like a stream deck which i'll link this down below if you're interested in it and i do have a tutorial talking about a stream deck but it's not directly for this program but it might give you a direction or an idea on how to do that but you can also set up your stream deck if you wanted to be able to switch between these easily without having to click on your keyboard directly um which would be super nice so that's the what the hot key here is all about so this one here is if you want to be able to hold it down and have it only change while you're holding it down so this is kind of a toggle state that you you can mix oh my good guys i keep combining words and then you can delete states in here if you by clicking this trash can here if you want to get rid of them and you can add states by clicking the plus button uh, to get a new state down there next let's talk about these bars over here so here's the microphone volume sensitivity if you turn this up then as you can see my mouth stops talking so you can gauge where your microphone is at and i would drag this bar just a little bit below on um, where your peak is but if you start whispering then it's not going to be moving so you kind of want to test like those different levels there um and then here's the microphone delay sensitivity so like how long do you want it to delay when you're done talking see how it takes forever to stop talking and there's like a huge disconnect so i would move it pretty far up here so it stops moving pretty much as soon as i stop talking so you can mess with those bars on um, your microphone device this is where you choose what mic you're using so if your avatar is not moving at all make sure your mic is set up correctly uh, next is display settings so this is your background this is going to come in handy when we start moving into obs which i'll talk about in a bit the sharp versus smooth image i don't really know like i haven't seen a huge difference here visually but it might matter for your specific art so you can toggle between those to see what looks better but i haven't really seen a big difference about stream i actually don't know what that means so if anybody knows what this means feel free to drop a comment below because i'm actually unsure of uh what spot stream means and then next you can hide the interface or you can bring it back by clicking Next is the load file. So this is how I loaded all the other models in here. So like I said, this is great if you want to send a file to a client. With my clients, all I did was save the VideoTube file after setting all the things up here. So you can set it up for your clients so they don't have to deal with any of that because they usually don't know those extra technical bits. So we can just call this uh, avatar.hanami is her name. We can save that to our desktop. And then all the person has to do on the receiving end when they come into VideoTube Mini is click load and then they'll go and they'll find that file so you could just send this file directly to them and when they click it and open it it should load everything for them uh, directly into video to mini which is super duper cool and then if you need to save it of course you can save it uh, down there so that's everything you need to know in video to mini itself and we're going to talk about the background selection here and how to actually set your model up in obs once everything is ready to go in video to mini all right so now we are in obs i hid my 2d model for now so she's not blocking anything because i've made that mistake and so many other videos so what we're going to do is if you're unfamiliar with obs you can download that i'll also leave a link down below but once you are in obs you'll click, click the plus button on the scenes or if you already have a scene set up you can go directly in your sources we'll just call this new test scene and the next thing you'll do is I like to set it up as a game capture. So I'm going to right click in sources, click add, and we'll do a game capture. And we'll just call this Hanami VTuber. And then you will drop this menu down, choose a specific window, and you will choose VideoTube. 
mini right here click ok you can do allow transparency so this is one way to do it um this is a way that we'll start with it to let it kind of shine through now you should be seeing her uh, as you can see there's some weird green screen effect kind of going around those sparkles so a way i'm going to fix that is i'm going to right click on hanami uh, click filters then we're going to do plus and we're going to do a chroma key and click ok and we have green screen selected and we'll go ahead and turn that up a little bit until we can find a good medium we can also turn smoothness up a bit you have to be careful because i have some green greens and the flower in her hair so sometimes it's a little tricky to get green screen stuff to work smoothly i have some like extra glow around the snow so that's a little bit of a struggle as well so there we go this is set up pretty well uh if your character is has a lot of green in them you're not going to want to use the green screen you're going to want to use a different color so in that case you go back into video tube mini you would go to display settings and change your background to one of these other colors, pink, gray, blue. And then when you go into your OBS, instead you would go to the filter section and you would choose down here, either the custom color, or if you're using blue or magenta with the chroma key instead of using green. So that's how that would work. And I'll show you an example of that right now. So let's just turn this to blue, for example. It's gonna look awful because my character has blue in her coat. So as you can see, she looks scary and like a ghost now because it's keying out all the blue colors. So it depends on what colors are in your avatar and uh, what you're going to be looking for. Actually, I kind of like how it gave it like this blue, like sparkly glow. I don't know. I just messed with it and see now here we are accidentally. So that should be enough info to help you set up your PNG tuber with VideoTube Mini. I hope you learned a ton from this video. If you're looking for another video to watch on PNG tubing or want to find an alternative way to do so, you can check out my Fuji Tech tutorial, which I just released. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on the Sapphire Star. Bye!